Well, greetings and thank you for hanging out with us this morning. Conversation we're going to have in this video is one of our myths. We kind of know from experience that a myth is something that we kind of commonly believe to be true, but if you tease it out and think it through and we do some critical thinking, you kind of discover it's not really true. And the one we're talking about today is one that we figured out about 25 years ago, changed our lease, really made life a whole lot simpler for us, and it will for you too. It goes something like this. The rent start date and the move-in date must be the same. In other words, when we're drafting our leases, we want to say the move-in date is X and the rent starts on that date and have the tenant sign it and, and it's done. And we kind of think rent start date, move-in date have to be the same date. And I used to think that for the first 10 years of our business and figured some things out. Another way to say it goes something like this. If the tenant moves in early, you must prorate the rent. In other words, if the tenant says, I'm moving in June 1, and you prepare the lease that way, and then all of a sudden they want to move in um, May 20th, you've got to go back and change the lease and prorate the rent and then do the move in. And we got tired of doing that because tenants don't always know when they're going to move in. So we figured out a way to get around that and make our life a whole lot easier. So let's kind of tease this out a little bit and uh, see where it goes. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. Number one, tenants don't always know when they're moving in. Uh, let's face it, you and I don't either. When we move, uh, we think we're going to move in June 1, but it really might be May 27th. It might be June 3rd. Uh, when tenants are signing and making applications, and they say, here's the move-in date, that date moves a lot, and they don't always know any more than you and I would uh, exactly when that move is going to take place because there's a lot of variables. There's many things that change, and so there, there's, there's a struggle here <clears throat> in the lease signing process of when is the real date for move-in. So that's one of the challenges that we work with. The second one goes like this. We often get leases executed well in advance of the move-in. If, if you're doing like we did, we would approve a lease on May 1 for a June 1 move-in. We might have the tenant execute that lease May 10 or May 15 or May 20. And, and so we're executing leases well in advance of the move-in date. And if we plug in a move-in date and a rent start date and think that they're the same date and put it in the lease, now the tenant wants to move in a, a week or so early. We've got to often go back and redo the lease and re have it executed kind of a hassle factor and it doesn't have to be that way, okay? The third challenge is we think rent should start when they move in. Now, when I was a young property manager, I thought, hey, if they take possession on the 27th of May, rent should start on the 27th. If they agree to a June 1 move in and they move in on June 4th, rent should start on June 1. We, we kind of struggle with this when should rent start and when should move in be and do those dates have to be the same and we wrestle with that we know other property managers who do as well so let's look at maybe some solutions to this problem see if we can't do it a better way what we did for 25 years <clears throat> we identified a rent start date based on the tenant's best guess so in other words it's a target date so we would say in our rental agreements and in our negotiating with the tenant okay, your target date is the, uh, uh, the 1st of June, and so we're going to start this lease on June 1st, and the rent is going to start June 1st, okay? And then we would lock that in. We would not change that based on their move-in date. We would actually let the move-in date evolve. So we would say, look, I don't care when you move in, rent starts June 1st. And if you want to move in May 15th, May 18th, May 23rd, it's okay. You want to move in June 3rd or June 5th, it's okay. But we've got a hard date when the rent starts. So one line on the lease says, rent start date is, okay? And then the last thing is, we would leave the rent start date alone, even though they moved in at a different time. Now that's kind of contrary to many of the, ways you, many of the managers that I talk to because they get this hard, rock, locked in idea that rent has to start the day people move in. And that really is not necessary. And when you separate those two, you're gonna make your life so much easier for yourself and your staff. You're gonna shrink down the amount of work that they do and, and but follow through because we got some challenges we need to talk through. Here's kind of what the language looks like, okay? Here's, here's why we said it. 
rent start date is, we're using it as an example, June 1, and then the move in, notice the word, and this is how we had it in our rental agreement. Move in target date is X. Now here's the extra language. The lease begins upon the day of move in or the rent start date, whichever is earlier. In other words, if the tenant agreed to June 1 and they're moving in on the 28th, it's okay. We're not gonna re-prorate the rent. We're not gonna re-execute the lease. We're gonna eliminate all that. Because once you've, once you've identified the rent start date, then the, then the actual move-in date can move around three, five, ten days before or after. Now, follow me because I know there's some challenges here because one of the things that we have to talk about is how the owner is going to respond. Because you and I both know that sometimes the owner lives nearby and they can maybe see that the tenant's starting to move their stuff in a week ahead of their rent start date. And they'll call you up and they'll say, oh, the tenant's moving in. Aren't they, you know, I'm going to get more rent, right? And so we got some challenges here. And, and I'm going to give you some reasons to explain to the owner why letting them in early is a really good idea, even without prorating the rent. Now, again, I know you're locked into this idea that rent should start the day they move in. But the, I'm going to make your life so much easier if you would maybe just put that idea with a question mark after it and listen to these arguments that you would give to an owner as to whether, as to why, you're not gonna prorate the rent if they move in a week early, okay? Follow my thinking here. Mr. Owner, you're talking to the owner that's fussing. Now, 90% of your owners won't fuss. 100%, you know, you get one out of 100 whose neighbor is reporting to the owner that a tenant's moving into their house. And I'll call the owner and they'll say, hey, you got tenants moving in. It's the 27th of the month. And the owner will call up and they'll say, I should be getting prorated rent because the tenant's moving in early. And we would say to them, no, here's our policy. Here's how we do it. Okay. And we would give a good explanation of the owner. So why we shouldn't prorate the rent, why moving the tenant in a week or two early is a good thing. Okay. Here we go. Vacant houses attract vandalism and theft. We all kind of have experienced that a vacant house is an imitation. It's an imitation for the neighbor kids to pry open a door and make it a party house. It's an imitation for somebody to come and remove the air conditioning condenser. It's an imitation for somebody to break in the back door, back up a tr pickup truck at two in the morning and pull out the stove and a refrigerator. So Mr. Owner, we're trying to protect your property and save you money. We let the tenant move in on the 25th of the month. We did not prorate the rent because they added security to your house and prevented vandalism and break in. So we didn't prorate the rent. We encouraged them to move in early because of this issue of vandalism and protecting your house. Bottom line, an occupied house is a safer house from a vandalism standpoint than a vacant house common sense, think it through. That's argument number one. Now here's some other arguments. Lawn care and utilities transfer to the tenant when they move in. So let's imagine you're in the summer and you've got a vacant house and the rent start date is June 1. We actually would contact the tenant and say, if you're ready, you can start moving some things in today We'll do the move-in inspection. We'll collect the security deposit. You can start moving things in now, and we won't prorate the rent. Why? One of the reasons is economic. Once they start taking possession, once they've got the key and you've got all your money, the lawn care and the utilities transfer to the tenant. Now, in Atlanta in the summer, keeping the air conditioning on can cost 150 bucks a month. That's, uh, what, $40 a week. So we would save the owner $80 simply because the tenant took the air conditioning over two weeks before the rent start date. And so our argument to the owner is lawn care and utilities are transferred to the tenant when they move in, not June 1 when the rent start date, and that's why we don't prorate the rent. Here's another reason. Secu security deposits are paid sooner and therefore the tenants are more committed. In the Georgia market, we can't collect the security deposit till the move-in inspection is done. The tenant has signed it and the tenant has a copy of it in their hands. So we've had instances where we've approved an application May 1. We might have a lease signed on May 15. And then something happens between May 15 and June 1, their target move-in date, 
or they get a, you know, some, they just found a better house, or they got divorce papers and they never move in. Well, common sense says the more money you have, the more committed they are. The more skin they have in the game, the more committed they are to moving in. So if you say to somebody, hey, it's May 15th, your rent starts June 1, why don't you begin moving things in the house? We'll get the move-in inspection done, we'll give you the key, we'll get the final money, and then you can start taking possession of the house. You have less vandalism, they take over utilities and lawn care, and they give you the money sooner, and they're more committed. So there are some intelligent, thoughtful arguments to the owner to take this idea of separating rent start date from move-in date. By the way, it works the same way if they decide to move in June 3rd or June 5th or June 7th. Mr. Mr. Tenant, the rent starts on June 5th, or I mean on June 1st, and you even put a sentence in the lease if you want it, rent starts June 1st regardless of the move-in date and you make it real clear to the tenant, your target is June 1, move in is June 1, your rent starts June 1, but once you get everything settled, you can actually encourage the tenant to take possession earlier. Why? Because it's good for the owner. It reduces vandalism, it gets more skin in the game, they take over lawn care and utilities, your commission is earned a little earlier because your commission generally is earned and can be received when the tenant physically moves in the house, not when they agree to move in the house. So there are good reasons for you to want to move a tenant in early. Don't worry about prorating the rent. You're looking out for your owner, which is under your agency duty is exactly what you're supposed to do. You just have to have an intelligent, thoughtful, plausible answer when one out of a hundred owner asks you about it. It will make your move in so much easier. It'll prevent you from having to re-execute leases because they want to move in five or 10 days earlier. Anything we can do to make our lives, to make our staff simpler, more streamlined, and, and secure our fees and protect the owner is always a good thing. So the myth goes like this. The rent start date and the move in date must be the same. Not so. And if the tenant moves in early, you should prorate the rent, right? Well, for 25 years, we said, no, that's wrong. 25 years, that represents about 8,000 move-ins. So don't convince yourself that this won't work. This is a terrific idea and it's simple and it helps you understand that the move-in date and the rent start date do not have to be the same. It requires a little tweaking in your lease. It requires a little bit of mental adjustment, but very candidly, you make this adjustment, your staff's gonna love it, your life's gonna get so much easier, and one out of 100 owners will call up and say, I understand the tenant moved in two weeks early, do I get more rent? And you have to have an intelligent answer for that, and we've just given it to you. Now, where can you maybe get more information like this, okay, <clears throat> on trainingpropertymanagers.com, this is our website. One of the big buttons on the front page is courses. Under that is online courses. We've got a whole bunch of online classes and series that you can sign up for. Some of them are free, some of them are available to our guests. Some of them you have to be registered, there's no money involved in that, give us your name and your email. Some you have to be a subscriber, that's 27 bucks a month. Some, if you're a super subscriber or you on a revenue sharing stream with us and you're engaged with us in some fashion, these courses are completely, or these uh, series are completely free to you. So that is all about rent collection, or rent start date and move in date or don't have to be the same. This will make your life so much easier. Well, thanks for hanging out today. We appreciate it so very much.